Hello everyone. Today we're gonna start our GAN session. Uh, we're gonna introduce you the Generative Adverse Severe Network and also about some, our user study and other case studies. GAN do have a lot of amazing applications. Uh, since discovered at 2014, uh, it was working pretty good, especially in image uh, for generating very realistic images and image in painting, editing, polishing, and image to image translation, even text to image translation. Like you give it a text or a skeleton, then it will generate very real images. And for uh, 2D or 3 object detection and anomaly detection in drugs or MRI images because it's working good in detecting differences. And also for some time series model generation like music video for uh, attention from eye tracking and also financial time series modeling. So again, mainly it consists of two neural networks, the generator and the discriminator. And it's trying to learn high dimensional complex real data distributions. So that's why it used neural network. And the generator is trying to learn it's trying to generate the noises and learn from the real data. And the discriminator is trying to distinguish the difference between the real and fake. Uh, like this skeleton we show here, the generator and discriminator, they repetitively updating each other. And, uh, and from this model, we can see uh, the generator keeps learning from real data and the discriminator keep updating the difference between real and generated until they are pretty alike. Also uh, from this objective function, the generator tries to minimize the probability of generated data being fake and the discriminator seeks to maximize the average of the log probability of all real data and the log of, of the inverse probability for fake data. Okay, let me head over to my team member, Josie Vanessa, to introduce you. Hello, everyone. I'm going to be introducing the basic training algorithm used to train GANs as proposed by Ian Goodfellow in his uh, seminal paper. So the algorithm is fairly simple. It basically follows um, these steps here that I'm going to describe right now. First, we loop over the over the true data set um, in mini batches. So basically we sample, first we sample M um, noise samples from a noise prior distribution. And this distribution can be uh, uniform or, or Gaussian. Um, and then we sample another M um, examples from the true data generating, from the true data set pretty much. And then we update the discriminator by taking um, an ascending uh, stochastic gradient step given by this formula. And then next we sample another mini batch of M um, noise samples uh, from the noise distribution, from the prior distribution. And then we update the generator uh, by descending its stochastic gradient descent uh, as given in this expression. So in Ian Goodfellow's paper, he actually mentions that the, on the discriminator update, we should um, update it until it gets to a, it, until it reaches to a stationary point of the objective function of the minimax game. However, um, as he also mentioned in practice, uh, he saw that only one step is sufficient um, to make to make convergence, to make to to guarantee convergence, pretty much. So. Now we're gonna take a look at the um, uh, synthetic data example. So basically we generate uh, two Gaussian distributions, one of them um, with a zero mean and identity covariance matrix of dimension P, uh, and the other one with uh, a mean uh, along the vector with uh, all five in its components uh, and uh, covariance matrix given by twice the identity matrix. And um, P here in this example is 50. So we are in a 50 dimensional uh, space and we sample 50,000 uh, samples from this, uh, from this space uh, being 80% uh, of them coming from 
like the true data distribution and 20% of them come from uh, this uh, outlier distribution, let's say. And we are gonna apply now the, the algorithm um, just that I just showed to train GANs uh, on, this, on this problem. And let's see whether the generator can, um, can generate samples and whether the, the, uh, the discriminator can uh, distinguish between, uh, between, can distinguish the samples between each of these uh, distributions. So here in these charts, we show the evolution of the, uh, ge the generator uh, distribution with respect to the real data distribution over the number of epochs. So as we can see, as the number of epochs uh, increase, we, we see that the distribution of the generator gets better and better uh, in fitting the true distribution of the real data. Uh, and we also see that uh, over the number of epochs here, we see that the loss function for the discriminator and the generator, they basically converge to a stationary value which is, of course, um, showing us that the minimax game has reached a stationary point uh, in around 100, 100 or even less epochs. So here we show uh, how the discriminator performs in identifying which samples come from the outlier distribution and which ones come from the true data distribution. So this cloud of blue points here represents the true uh, data distribution. As we can see, they are pretty much centered at zero, which is um, our, our uh, zero mean uh, Gaussian. And, um, and these green points here are pretty much uh, centered at around five uh, here, which is uh, our, uh, the mean of the outlier distribution. So as we can see by these red crosses, we see that the discriminator uh, uh, is able to fairly uh, to distinguish fairly well which samples come from the true distribution and the outlier distribution. However, uh, there are a few mistakes here that the discriminator made uh, in the true distribution. It tagged a few samples as being um, as belonging to the uh, outlier distribution when it actually when they actually belong to the true data distribution. But that's okay because we don't expect it to. Um, 100% uh, identify correctly all the samples. So now we're going to shift our attention to um, a real data set case, where we uh, take where we take uh, financial time series from a few stocks belonging to the SP500 index from 2015 to 2020. And interestingly, as we can see here, around May of 2020. Um, March actually 2020, we can see uh, a big dip on the financial uh, on the prices of the stocks, on the log prices of the stocks. So this dip it's actually it was actually caused by the uh, pandemic of the COVID-19 that we are passing through right now. So we're gonna see how um, how the generator uh, performs on learning the, the empirical data distribution. So here. Um, we conduct uh, the learning using that vanilla algorithm uh, with the help of the code provided by the professor to learn the, to learn uh, the true data distributions with, uh, with the generator. So as you can see here at epoch 250 and by epoch I mean a pass on the true, uh, a whole pass on the true data set. Uh, we can see that uh, the generator, it's already performing fairly well on understanding the, the distribution of the real data. And at epoch uh, uh, 1000, it's, it's getting better and, and, and better. So if you want to um, understand more and see more applications of GANs in financial uh, markets, I recommend you checking out these two references. Uh, the first one is about generating um, sample uh, generating covariance matrix from stocks. So basically the author applied GANs to understand and to learn uh, to learn uh, covariance matrices between between stocks. And on the second one, on the second reference, we have uh, an application for GANs on actually generating uh, financial time series, uh, price time series of stocks. So it's, uh, there are two different uh, 
they are two different works and they are very recent. One of them is from 2019, the other one is from 2020, which just goes to show that GANS is a fairly uh, important, um, fairly important model that's being used um, all over uh, data science and, and statistics problems. So, uh, hello everyone. I'm going to introduce how to reformulate GAN in function space and uh, one of the most important uh, training strategies to obtain a stable GAN. So, we can consider the F divergence to measure the discrepancy between two distributions as the following definition. And of course, in order to approximate the function QX, we can directly take the functional gradient with respect to the function PX. So, how can we use the deep neural network to formulate this problem? Each time we sample some particles from our uh, distribution and then we update our generator only based on this uh, particles by using the gradient information from the discriminator. So this is very from, uh, similar with the gradient boosting uh, uh, algorithms and I think the details can be checked in our previous work at the following link. And uh, Based on this for, uh, this model, I do some uh, demo generative experiment. We can see we generated some examples based on the data site amnest, fashion amnest, CIFA 10, and celebrity. Uh, we can see no matter the green scale image or the uh, RGB image, we can also uh, we can both get a good uh, visual quality result. So um, because we know that uh, uh, at, the at the beginning of the training, uh, the discriminator is always stronger than the generator, which means that the gradient from the discriminator will be vanishing. So how can we solve this problem? We can train the, we can train the GAN using the progressive training. It, uh, we first train a very simple structure, just like the uh, resolution uh, from four by four. And uh, each time when we get a, a good result from the low level layer, and then we add a much more complex layer, just like the uh, diagram shows. And uh, finally, we can see we can, by using this strategy, we can get a super resolution density result, uh, 1024 by 1024. And we also do this uh, strategy in our experiment. We can see from the amnest and the fashion amnest data side, we first generate a four by four resolution image. And then until finally we get a full resolution, 32 by uh, 32. Also, we do this, we repeat this experiment on the celebrated data side. We can see until we get a 128 resolution, we do not have too much artifact involved in the genital image. And the result is much better than the vanilla training strategy. Okay. Uh, so this was our presentation. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope we uh, convinced you that uh, uh, generative adversarial networks are very important models and have applicability in a very, very uh, variety of scenarios. And we are excited to see uh, what our peers have done in their projects. Thank you very much.